G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the north side of the map, we've got Beastie Acuity. We've got his pocket recon and up towards the north, we've got De Muslim. On the other side of the map, this is French Pass. Who have we got, Lydicor? We will have Vortex playing as the purple with the Holy Roman Empire on the right side. Mister as the Abbasids in Teal. And down south, Lucifron playing with the Chinese French pass with the gold mine spawns bidding a little weird as you see all the way to the right side and on the left side it's a little empty. This isn't actually something that favors any team in particular, it's a weird spawn though. So the right side of this uh, central area is a lot more important than the left side will be. Yeah, and I, I, this is the first time I've ever seen this map in a team game. Uh, obviously, this is French Pass. Uh, and yeah, French pa Pass is known for being a bit of a turtly map. But um, yeah, interestingly, you spawn very far away from the pass uh, when you are playing in the team game. So it's quite a bit of a walk to get there. Uh, but it does seem like it's quite easy to wall this one off. I suspect down towards the south, it should probably be about two or three relatively small wall segments. Uh, that should be able to get you a nice wall off there uh, for both teams by the look of it. So that should be fine. And then up towards the north, uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a of an effort, a bit more of a chore to wall that one in. But uh, definitely still in the equation. Do you think we're going to be seeing some walls out on this map today, Lidicor? I would definitely think so, but as you said, it's a lot longer wall to make than it is in 1v1, so it's not as easy as in 1v1 to just pull one villager and stonewall it off early. You actually need to put quite a lot of effort into walling this, especially on the right side, as you said. The left side has quite a lot of forests. In fact, they form a very good natural barrier here as we take a look at the hunts. On the left side, you do have two very nice patches of huntables for uh, Lucifron. And given the fact that we don't have a Roost player, these deer will live to see another day, that's for sure. <laughs> Finally, no one is racing to kill them. I'm, I'm sure there'll still be people to kill them very, very soon. Just give it a couple of minutes. Uh, the Holy Roman Empire will have to get out on the map, the yep. the Abbasid potentially. But uh, I, I'm curious to know, or curious to see exactly what we're going to be spotting out this early. Uh, because Mr. once again, is going for his patented early aggression. He's got two spears heading out in tandem together. Uh, he's got the scout out early as well. Uh, another spear coming up the rear. I'm curious as to whether we see a villager come up as well with these guys. Or potentially a Dark Age ramp push. In 1v1, that's a little too risky because if it fails, you're pretty much dead. But if you think about it, with the Abbasids, especially if you can receive some slink from your teammates later, you could potentially use this as a chance to slow down or even knock out one opponent for a long time. And if your recovery is a little faster than your opponent's recovery, then you already won something with it. I also love how Mr. donated all of his sheep to his teammate Vortex here. So, obviously, Vortex in the pocket is going to be very happy with that. And <laughs> we will have the Spearman marching forward. So far, this was undetected by the Muslim. And he has to be very careful, because if he gets caught off guard over here, being down three games, that could be the end of the story for them. Yeah. Now, one of the things I will mention, I, I'm not sure if you know this, Lidicor, but when you send your ally your sheep like this, if they actually murder them or slaughter them without being in their own colour, so if they're still in your colour, you'll get a little attack and uh, attack sound that goes off. It's it's quite annoying. I remember the first time it happened to me, I'm like, why am I under attack in my ally's base? And it was because they were killing my sheep. Well, feels bad. The weird thing is that the villagers don't convert the sheep, and it's just so weird at that point, because... You would assume that these green sheep are already converted to purple. And as it seems, Mista is coming in on the gold mine for now. No rams. Instead, the spearman will catch the Muslim off guard. Luckily for him, he's already going up to feudal age, but this is going to slow down his fast castle and with that, the fast imp as well. Yeah, not only that, but uh, for, for the Muslim, highly likely that he wanted to grab professional scouts and he's not going to have the gold to do it now. He sits on 199 gold. So yet to drop down that mill, but he, he will have all the resources he needs for it. But this is such a smart move coming out once again from the mister. Really, I, I, I've got to applaud this play. This just this early aggression, because th the way that I explain it is typically when you enter a game, you've got a plan. You see, you, you know what your civ is. You're like, okay, I'm playing the Holy Roman Empire. You see your enemy civ. Okay, they're playing the Abbasid. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I think they're going to do. But now, now things have changed. Why? Because they didn't do what you thought they were going to do. They've got spears killing your mining camp. And you're six minutes or five minutes into the game. 
And to respond to that now, you need to make an archery range. And it's like, I, why do I want to make an archery range as the as, as the Holy Roman Empire at five minutes into the game? I don't want to do that. And it's just like, it is such a smart move from the mister to do this because it just puts the opponent on the back foot and it frustrates the hell out of him. Indeed. He could have used the emergency repairs, in fact, but he probably forgot about it in the heat of the battle. But as you said, the key thing here is that the Muslim didn't want to go for an archer range. As you said, it could have been professional scouts potentially. And the key thing here is that you're slowing down the HRE player. And if you slow down the HRE player, his fast team is going to be much slower. And the slower your fast team, the lower the villager count you will have in mid game. Because every single second you're late compared to the opponent's Holy Roman Empire player to Imp is going to be amplified because of how fast the Palace of Schwabia produces villagers. Yeah. So basically every five seconds you're delayed, you're losing a villager over the HRE player of the opponent. And that is just a massive difference. Beastie also having a villager intercepted here by Lucifer's scout. What the was this villager going to do? Unreal. It, what, what, I'm curious what this villager was doing. It's it just... It was out on the flank. I saw the the scout pick it up, but it's yeah, it seems maybe going for a bit of a wall or something potentially out here. I think he may have wanted to go for a corner and go for an Abbasid trade boom. He Ooh. aged up with the economy wing, but Beast is one of those players that loves to trade early. We have seen that on some maps before as well, especially maps like Danube River. So it's possible he wanted to go up to Castle with trade wing and have a market already set up by that time. For now, he's going to trade off against the scout of the opponent. The aggression from the Spearman has been repelled, but it was a minimal investment for Mista, and you see he's already dropping a second town center, so he's not that much behind compared to the other Abbasid player. If you look at the villager count, it's 26 for Beastie, Mista is at 26 as well, so absolutely no deficit, yet he was able to delay the Muslim so much. It was, su it was such a smart move, really. I, I absolutely love it out of him, and you I you're 100% right, he's going for a double early market. Look at this from Beastie. Very, very greedy, so he's going for double town center double market and he's t he's uh telecast telecasting he's broadcasting this to his enemy as well he's saying hey i'm going ham so uh you guys better get ready for me to go ham and that's what he's doing the weird thing here is that knowing that that scout was harassing those villagers for so so long i would have expected him to add two more scouts from town center obviously you sacrifice some bills but you want to get that trade running, so having one or two extra scouts come in here to make sure these go up would be vital. He's not grabbing that scout, though. Back on the north, it looks like the spearmen have finally been cleaned up, and now the Muslim is bringing in the scouts. As you said, professional scouts was part of the plan, but it's just now finishing, so he's so, so <laughs> late. Whereas, on the other side, if you look at Vortex, he's already in Castellate, so he's moving out for relics with the Ragnis Cathedral, and that's going to give him such a nice edge over the opponent's Holy Roman Empire player. Yeah, it makes it very difficult uh, to, to be pushed behind like that. But if we do a quick relic count, we can see down towards the south, there's the two relics, or down towards the east of the map. Up towards the north, it looks like the relics are a little bit more favoured towards uh, the Beastie QT team, it, it seems at this point. And there's also one relic in the middle. Are there only five relics on this map, it seems? One, two, three, four... Maybe. I can I can see five. I can see one in the middle, two down to the south, and two up to the north. There is one in the cathedral of Vortex already. Oh, okay. So yes. maybe he's carrying some back. We'll have to do a tally at that once we have all of those picked up. And it looks like Recon is also setting a couple of uh, traders here. So not only is the Abbasid player going for a trade boom, we're also going to have Recon, despite playing the Song Dynasty Chinese with two town centers here, also playing with a couple of traders doesn't have a very, very long distance covered here, but still, it's extra economy being added, and that's always valuable. 135 gold per trip that they return returns their investment so fast, and it's going to be added level of economy as well. Yeah, it's a pretty crazy amount. Uh, I think the big thing for me is if he's if he's doing 135 and he's going that far, how much do you think these, uh, these caravans or these traders are going to be worth for Beastie? It's got to be ridiculous amounts. It's got to be 200 plus easily. Um... It, it's it's around 400. A corner to corner on a 3v3 map is something like 350 or so. Oh my lord. And keep in mind, he's got access to the uh, the trade wing, uh, which can increase that by a thirty further 30%. Exactly, and that's actually a feudal age technology as well. So that's the brutal thing. It's a rather cheap technology you can access early. It's not even like an imperial age technology. A uh, little attempt on the right side by the Muslim trying to discourage the forces of 
and Lucifron to come in. Another Volto attempt coming in from the Muslim, <laughs> but both of those will fail to convert the unit, although at least he was able to discourage. Yeah, that the first wall of lol had nobody inside it. I watched, I was actually looking at the prelate when it came down and there was just nobody inside it. So I think it might've been a misclick on that first one. The second one was a little bit closer, but yeah, unfortunately didn't catch anybody in it. But uh, he's got two relics going for the Regnitz Cathedral now. So he's going to be happy with that. Uh, when it comes to other relics that are out on the map, obviously he's got those ones down to the south that he's scouted out. But other than that, there's not many that are out and about for him. To be honest, the fact that the Muslim can bring back two potentially free relics to the Ragnitz Cathedral, given how set back he was, is insane. At this point, you have three in the Ragnitz Cathedral Vortex. He's already in Imperial, though, and he is rushing up a market. Makes me wonder if, indeed, we're going to see that fast wonder. Because one thing is sure, Beast is team building on the trade they're playing for late game. So, as you said, going for a fast wonder here with the HRE player could be massive. Vortex banking up a ton of gold already, as Beast is coming up with the storm wasn't the right. You can't really let that trade boom come in though for Beastie's team if you are Lucifron, Vortex and the Mista, because as you said, that's going to be a spectacular amount of gold returned. In fact, that is 338 gold per trip. That's a lot of gold, isn't it? Oh, and that's only going to get even more. Now, are they going up with the trade wing as well? Let's have a look and see. He's going to be, Beastie going to be clicking up very shortly. 15 villages on gold. He's sitting at 500 gold at the moment, about to hit that 600 mark. Looks like he's just done a little bit of selling. Uh, so hopefully going to be clicking up any second. I want to see, I, I suspect he's probably going to go with the trade wing. Yep, it's, it's likely that he's going to go with the trade wing because otherwise, if you go with any other of the wings, then you will just be able to grab the trade wing in Imperial, and that's just too late. You want to have that upgrade in as soon as possible, and indeed, the trade wing is coming in. His eco is going to skyrocket right now. Beastie, with only 570 gold per minute right now, but that's because those traders haven't returned yet. Once they start returning the gold, it could be massive, and Vorix is grabbing relic number 4 already for himself, so he's gonna have a head start over his opponent. There is free as well for the Muslims, so at least his Ragnitz Cathedral is maxed out. He's just now going into Imperial with the Palace of Schwabia. Oh, he did get three in there. I'm curious where he got that third one from, but yeah, going to be clicking up with the Palace of Swabia, so keeping in mind that his opponent has been in uh, Imperial for quite some time now, the Palace of Swabia for him going down, uh, yeah, quite a while ago. But uh, University coming out as well for Vortex. And uh, have a look at all the villagers that are queued up inside the Palace of Swabia right now for Vortex. There's just so many of them, but he's he's essentially doing a 5TC boom with that, isn't he? It is very possible. At this point, Vortex is sitting at 71 villagers, and on the other side, the Muslim is at 41. That's the difference that you're getting from that imp difference. And now, bit of a scuffle in the middle as uh, Vortex will keep his uh, prelate alive over here with the support of Lucifron. They are going for those sacred sites, and in the middle, Lucifron is already setting up stables. He's right to start pumping out Fire Lancers to this central area, and if they grab both sacred sites, it doesn't matter if Beast's team goes for Wonder, because the sacred sites will win them the game a lot faster. Yeah, I think it's a pretty smart move to be going and looking to secure these sacred sites early. Um, one of the things I've been keeping an eye on is just the income per minute. I just want to see if anybody's mining any stone because I think that's going to be a good indicator if people are planning to go for any sort of uh, wonder plays. So we'll have to keep an eye out and see. Uh, I might actually switch it over to current resources. You can see that people are starting to stack up resources as well. Both Lucifron and the Muslim having plenty of resources in the bank at the moment. Exactly, especially the Muslim is the one that's banking up a lot. Well, the only player mining stone right now is Beastie. Vortex also adding a couple of stone miners. Beastie, now that the traders are coming in, suddenly his gold income per minute is rising like crazy. Soon he's gonna have the best. Fire Lancers hitting the field on the right side for Lucifron. They are still castle age units, so they're not as powerful as they could possibly be. Sometimes you see the Chinese player waiting until Imperial with the Fire Lancers, but this time around he wants to be a little more aggressive, and that is because Vortex already has Bombards out, and we also see some Spearmen arriving from Mista. The Muslim's team doesn't have a ton of army to fight this right now. Yeah, just a couple of scouts coming out to say good day, greet them, and uh, unfortunately they get uh, they get one shot by the bombard as it turns around and says goodbye to them. But uh, yeah, Vortex pushing up now with plenty of barracks, and it almost seems like uh, Beastie's team has committed a little bit aggressively to the uh, the booming play. Have a look at all the markets that are going up here towards the north as well. Triple market coming in for the Muslim. Double market again for Recon up here as well. Keeping in mind he did have that initial market that he he uh, made. He's still got those 
guys going as as well. But uh, my fear at this point is there's a lot of tempo in the favor of Vortex in uh, with uh, Lucifron and the Mister as well, and they are going to be pushing their agenda up here towards the north. And this is danger on this map. If you don't boom, your opponent will just outboom you. But if you go too heavy on the eco department, suddenly your opponent could appear with a bunch of units. And on this map, you're not really forced to make units early on. So you might be completely without an army. And the Fire Lancers just hit the field. Men at arms still lacking a lot of upgrades here for the Muslim. And you already have some bombards crawling up. Abbasid infantry could make siege here. Unless we see some units appearing on the battlefield soon from... Uh, or yellow and blue players, the Muslim could be in serious trouble here. Yeah, this is not looking good, Litacore. Especially now that the Bombards has, have begun sieging down the production of the Muslim as well. He's up to the Imperial Age, but you've really got to start asking the question, well, what's he going to be able to do in the Imperial Age if he doesn't have any barracks? And he's put them all out the front as well here. Really easy to get access to. Only one layer of stone walls went up. And I mentioned earlier in the game, I said you can wall down in the south very easily with just a few segments, but up towards the north, it's going to require a lot more effort. And that definitely seems to be the case. And now the villagers are out. They're going to be looking to siege down or throw rather their torches at these Springles as well as the Bombards. But the elite men at arms have got their heavy maces out and they are whacking away, having a absolute field day. And at this point, the Muslim is just desperately trying to buy himself some time. But as you said, there is already fully upgraded men at arms coming in here from Vortex. Fire Lancer is on the way as well. And you see, Vortex is the only player in Imperial because he needs the Bombards. The other two are going for full castle pressure and it really feels like the Muslims team wasn't expecting that because it is just going to be a full castle unit for the Fire Lancers and of course the Spearmen and, and the Men at Arms from the Mista. The Muslim could be in serious trouble here. And not just a Muslim. Take a look at the Fire Lancers right now that are around the base of Recon at the moment. They are sieging down landmarks. They've already taken out a stable. There's also oh up towards the, the back on the trade line, multiple Fire Lancers that have already taken out traders. The, a single Fire Lancer does remain. It's gonna get cleaned up now, but they are in the base. They are in the supply line, the trade line, and they are beginning to push in on their opponents and really look to put a nail in the coffin here. That is just brutal. I really feel like throughout this set, the strategy advantage seemed to be on the side of Mr. Steve because they always seem to do something that their opponents did not expect. This game, it was the couple of spearmen from Mr. coming in to do damage, followed up by a full castle age pressure, really only having one player named so that he can have bombards. Such a clever idea here, because this way you can just spend all of your resources on army and that's exactly what we're seeing. The Muslim's base is getting overrun, he's pulling everybody to try and take down those bombards. But with all the infantry and cavalry coming in, it's gonna be impossible to take those down. The Fire Lancers are about to charge in on those bills as well. Yeah, those poor villagers are about to get absolutely shredded. Bombard's doing a great job microing down. We see a prelate actually coming out with a relic. It, it looks like it might actually get picked off before it gets the chance to scream its famous last words. Is it going to get out off? It doesn't look like it. <laughs> He's reallocated or re-changed re change the direction. But uh, unfortunately, it does go down. But it is not looking pretty right now for the uh, the team. And the Muslim taps out. That is it. It is a 4-0. It is a clean sweep. It is an undefeated team right now. Lucifron, the Mister, and their final teammate, Vortex. That is just unbelievable. And... Make no mistake, Beastie's team was completely undefeated before this set in the entire tournament. So it really much seemed like this is going to be a battle for ages. But Vortex's team always was able to bring something that their opponents didn't expect. Starting off from uh, game number three, probably, where we could just see Mista coming in with the aggression. They didn't really expect that. Did a lot of damage to the Mongol player. But this game in particular just showed what their playstyle is. Once again, Mista just doing his own thing here, bringing a couple of spearmen, delaying the Muslim a lot. And if you look at the villager graph, it tells you how much damage he caused. Mm -hmm. Compare the villager counts of Vortex to the ones of the Muslim. That is how much Mista was able to delay his opponent. There was like steady 20-25 villagers gap between the two players caused by free spearmen of Mista. And that is just such a big advantage that you can build on. And we discussed that in previous games as well, that they are just so good when it comes to building on that already existing lead. And Mr. just guaranteed that they do have that existing lead for them going on. Yeah, it was an impressive delay tactic uh, that, that Mr. used. It 
barely even punished him. I think he was up maybe about a minute later than what you'd normally expect. And yeah, you can just see the difference in the village account right there between De Muslim and Vortex. It's absolutely huge. Looks to be about 30 villages by the time they reach their respective peaks. But uh, yeah, what a uh, what a demonstration. I thought that we might have seen a sub-20 minutes uh, wonder coming out, but it turns out that we just saw a sub-20 minute defeat coming in instead. So very nice timing push coming out there from uh, Vortex, Lucifron, and the Mister. Tell me, Litacore, did you expect it to be over in a clean sweep? I mean, both teams were coming into this undefeated. Did you think that there would still be one team undefeated at the end of the day? No, absolutely not. I expected this one to be a 4-3. At the beginning of the set, I said 52-48% are the chances for between Los Pollos Hermanos and Beast and Straboras. And this is just brutal, especially considering that uh, before the tournament, the team of Vortex played a show match versus Hera, Kaposh, and Marine Lord, and they got swept. It was a 3-0, super, super dominant set by Hera's team. So I was like, ooh, this is a little concerning for them, because while they do have a great lineup of players, that was a pretty ugly defeat. Of course, it's only a show match, but still, you didn't necessarily expect them to re sweep the entire tournament, not losing a single game. Absolute brutal domination. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty ridiculous. Well, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out Litacor's channel because he's got plenty of content like this. He was the host of the Pro League. Litacor, it's been an absolutely amazing tournament. So thank you very much for putting on the show for everybody. Oh, it was my pleasure. We had some spectacular games going on. Obviously, it would have been very fun to see some closer matches as well in the Grand Finals, but this is what happens when you have a, an insanely strong team out there. But before we go away, we do have an interview with the winners, so hang tight because you'll be able to ask some questions as well uh, to the players. So hold on for a brief moment while we set up the interview with the winners. I'm pretty sure that you have some questions as well to Vortex's team. Yes, definitely. <laughs> 